want to congratulate everyone taking part in the 2014 First Robotics Championship. And I want to congratulate FIRST on this historic anniversary. For 25 years, you've inspired the young and the young at heart to imagine bigger, build better, and pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. All told, students in FIRST competitions have built hundreds of thousands of robots. And when those robots take over, I hope they remember all the nice things I said about you guys in this video. Now, we all know that robots are awesome, but that's not the only reason groups like FIRST are so important. From Benjamin Franklin to Thomas Jefferson to your founder, Dean Kamen, America has always been a nation of builders and inventors and makers. By taking part in this competition, you're also taking your place in this incredible tradition, one that brings jobs and industries to America and improves lives around the world. It's the creativity and talent of young people like you that makes me so confident our best days lie ahead. So again, congratulations to all the students, teachers, mentors, parents, and coaches. And I'm looking forward to meeting some of you at the next White House Science Fair. Good luck, and may the best robot win. Please welcome First President Don Bosey, First Executive Advisory Board Chair Woody Flowers, and First Founder Dean Kamen. Good morning. Welcome. First World Championship is a really good thing. So since we have a lot, of, lot to do, I'm going to speak very economically, and I'm going to make a series of assertions that I believe to be true. First can be a great boost to all of us, because to stay in the game, we must continue to be able to do things that machines cannot yet do. For good reasons, computers and robots are doing more. Things uniquely human represent a smaller subset of what we do. The world and the United States are changing rapidly. Data to support that statement can be seen in the next America and the second machine age. Business and education are changing rapidly. Good examples can be found in the zero marginal cost economy. In this rapidly changing world, please remember, education and training are different. Learning calculus is training. While learning to think using the concept of calculus, requires education. Learning a language is training, but learning to communicate in any language requires education. Training is a necessary but insufficient commodity that can and will be outsourced to machines. Education, however, conveys comparative advantage and will likely be associated with face time with another person. Education is not only about tests and grades. Education is about critical, creative thinking. Education respects failure and the grit to bounce back. Education is about ethical, wise, empathetic, integrative thinking. Education is about problem finding and design and research and development. Students, if you paid for education and you find yourself being only trained, complain loudly. First is an exemplar of real inspirational education. First 
can help you ensure that you can continue to be able to do things machines cannot yet do. Please think about what I've said. Thank you. Please welcome Dean Kamen. Good morning. Good morning. So, so, good morning. So any of you that have been here before, or any regional know, I typically hold my remarks to the end, and it's always homework for the next season. I'm still going to hold most of my remarks to tomorrow afternoon at the ceremonies, but I want to give you a little heads up that a bunch of the homework that you need to do throughout the year, you might easily do today and tomorrow because I know you're not busy doing much else. It would be a good time. Seriously, the only reason I want to bring this up now is we have a critical mass of all of you here and a lot of great volunteers that want to help on this homework. And I've been a little frustrated that we haven't moved fast enough. You heard the President of the United States a few minutes ago point out that we've been at it for 25 years. By most metrics, we've had some pretty good growth. We were in a high school gym in Manchester the first year we did this. We had one event. It was the season. It was the championship. It was a high school gym. This year, we had 66 cities around the United States and around the world holding regionals throughout March. We had 29,000 schools in Junior First Lego League, First Lego League, First Tech Challenge, First Robotics. We have over 180 universities. <laughs> our, metrics, our metrics compared to science fairs look pretty good. $25 million in scholarships this year. By, by most standards, we've had incredible growth. But here's my problem, and I been pushing this for the last couple of years, but the students have to help. Now that we know FIRST works, and now that we know how well it works, it's even more disappointing that it isn't available to every student everywhere. A few years ago, as I tried to push that, I realized that in some ways I'm my own worst enemy. I focused in the early years on getting tech companies to give us the mentors. And we've got thousands of those companies giving us tens of thousands of those mentors. And I pushed the tech universities to get involved, and they have. We did a lot of things right. But it took me a long time to come up with two simple realizations. We're talking and singing to our own choir. It took a long time to reach out to other industries. And if we don't, we're going to fail to reach out to all the other kids that haven't figured out that they want to be geeks. So we went. We went. One major industry that gets to hundreds of millions of kids all the time, of course, is entertainment and more particularly music. And a couple of years ago, Will I Am and the Black Eyed Peas, right after doing the halftime show for the Super Bowl, came and did a halftime show right here for us. And I thought that was great. And I asked Will to come back last year to receive the first ever Will I Am Make It Loud Award because he promised, with his help, he would continue to stay involved and bring a whole new industry to help us reach more kids. And he'll be back again today to help give that award. <laughs> the 
but the students can't just be passive about it. So I also realized a few years ago, besides reaching out to other industries, and there'll be more than just the entertainment industry, there are other industries, and you'll see and hear more about them at noon at the Dean's List event, because we want to bring lots of other industries, companies, resources, which will help bring a broader diversity of students to get involved with FIRST. But a couple of years ago, I also said, we've done a great job of holding on to the mentors. Many of them started out as mentors because they had kids in FIRST. The kids go on, graduate. We keep the mentors. They retire from their companies. We keep the mentors. The teachers retire from teaching. We keep them. Our corporate sponsors, we keep them. It's an astounding family. The group that, ironically, we keep least, the students. You're the largest. You should be the most loud group in the interest of FIRST and in your own interest. You'll all be, in three or four years, alums of some university. And it'll be important to them and to you to stay connected. You leverage their network and prestige. They will be dipping into your pocketbook for the rest of your life. <laughs> First has not done a very good job of keeping track of our alums, which are a superset of all those universities. So I started the Dean's List program to say every team has to identify a couple of students that we can count on to keep their team involved and engaged, even as they leave high school, go to college, leave college, because creating a really powerful network of now a couple of generations of first students will be enormously valuable to you in that network, but it'll be enormously valuable, critically valuable, to help her first grow large enough to reach the original goal, change the culture of the country and the world by getting a generation of kids to understand the importance and excitement of science and technology. The largest single group of people that's going to be able to do that are our alumni. So, no more Mr. Nice Guy. The first people have made these tiny little buttons. As always, they're understated. The little button says on it, I'm sticking with first. There will be volunteers throughout the next two days asking you to sign up. Give us your coordinates, your email. Make sure we know how to find you. There'll be a booth in the pits. We will ask all the Dean's List finalists to put extra effort now and throughout their careers to build the alumni, to build first. I will save my other comments for later. But since you have two days during which there will be a target-rich community of people to help gather this information and do it right, you need to get involved. First is not a spectator sport. Almost everybody in this arena is also on one of the teams. You need to stay involved. You need to help us. I will keep reaching out to a broader and broader group of industries, people, so that we can attract more and more students. It's easy to get to the ones that already love tech. We have to give a lot of other students this perspective. And the students are the most effective tool to do that. You owe it to them. You owe it to yourselves. I've been asked to read, I guess, an advertisement. On behalf 
of FIRST, DECA, that would be my little company, is donating a slingshot water purification system to a country in need. If you want to find out where it will be donated, you have to stay tuned at the first Lego League Global Initiative Awards Ceremony, which will be in Washington, D.C. on June 3rd. So one of our great partners and one of our very quickly expanding programs, of course, is First Lego League. They asked us to support them, and we are. I think it's just another example of the fact that while tech is fun, you probably know the whole mission this year. The theme for First Lego League was disaster response, and they're going to make it real. Again, this community is extraordinary. It shouldn't be the best kept secret on the planet. We need to be proud of what we do, but we owe it to the rest of the students in your generation and the ones that come to make it available everywhere. And we've got to do it at a much faster pace, and we've got to become way more inclusive. We've got to give everybody a chance to find out that it really isn't the meek that will inherit the earth. It's the geek that will inherit the earth. Thank you. And now, please welcome Matt Grob from Qualcomm, presenting sponsor of this 2014 World Championship. Good morning. Wow, now I know what it feels like to have to follow Dean Cameron. Woo. Well, it's great to be here. What a lot of fun this is. And you know what? This is a great event, an incredible competition with great competitors, a great venue, a great organization with Dean and Woody and Don, and it's a lot of fun. But let me let you in on a little not so well kept secret. It's not just fun, it's actually good for you. It's good for your mind. It's good for your family. By the way, hi family. It's good for your career. It's good for your country. But more than that, the skills and talents that you bring to bear building these machines today in this competition are also going to help us all together solve the challenges of the world. Like for example, clean energy, health care, transportation, climate change. The skills and talents that you bring to bear today are exactly what you need to, to change the world in all those areas and help all the world around you at the same time. So it's more than just fun, but it is a lot of fun too. And it's one thing I like to do is think about what's going to happen in the future with all this, say in the next five, ten years. What's going to happen when, let's say, the batteries get a lot better with more capacity, which they will, or the mechanical designs get easier to design, more complex, easier to build, easier to share. That's really dramatically happening. What's going to happen when the processors get more powerful and the wireless links get faster and more robust. And by the way, we're going to help you guys with that one. Yes. That's <laughs> we'll what? Thank you, thank you. What's going to happen when the vision systems get more sophisticated, when the operating systems become more intelligent? Amazing things are going to happen. And. Uh, to take a cue from what uh, President Obama said, when the robots rise, who around here is going to know how to control them? You guys will. Oh. Well, I'm pretty, pretty thankful for that. OK, so again, I want to congratulate everyone here for taking part in this incredible event. I wish you all the best, and let's have a great finals. Thank you.
please welcome Jan Holloway from Monsanto, sponsor of these opening ceremonies. Good morning, everyone. I am so pleased to be here. Like all of you in the audience, uh, I was very interested in science and math as a kid as well. And it's terrific to see all of these teams coming together to create some great and friendly competition today. So I'm excited that FIRST is here in St. Louis because Monsanto, as many of you know, is also a St. Louis-grown company. We're an agriculture company, we're a seed company, and together with our farmer customers, we're really focused on feeding the people of this planet. As you may know, there are seven billion people on the planet today, and by the year 2050, we expect there will be 9.5 billion people. 9.5 billion people would fill this entire auditorium 150,000 times. So how are we going to feed all of those people in the future? How will we have enough safe, healthy, nutritious food? We have a fixed amount of land on which to grow our food. We don't want to cut down any more trees, yet we need to find ways to produce more food on that same amount of land. How do we do that at Monsanto? Just like you bring together teams of scientists and technologists and engineers and mathematicians, we do as well. And they come together and use great technologies like computer science and satellites and engineering and robots in order to find ways to produce more food on that same amount of land that we have available to us. You all will be the next innovators. You'll be the inventors of the future. You may work on flying cars or space travel or design the next Candy Crush, or you may find a cure for a disease or a new way to harness energy from the sun, or you may help us feed the world. Congratulations on making it here today. That's a huge accomplishment. For all of you, I think it's only the beginning of what you will bring to us in the future. And I'd also like to thank all of the teachers, the mentors, the sponsors, the parents for investing in that future as well. By supporting the great young minds in this room, you will only make our future better. We all expect fantastic things from you, as you've heard many times already this morning. So congratulations for being here. May the best team win, and I hope you have a great amount of fun. Thank you. Please welcome First President Don Bosi. Thank you, and good morning, First Family. So my rookie year at First is almost complete, and I have to say how truly inspiring it has been. This wonderful, global family of students, mentors, coaches, volunteers, and sponsors have welcomed me in so many different ways, and I'm truly grateful. This year has also been a lot of fun for me. I've been involved in so many rewarding activities, and one of them is this very moment, because I have the pleasure of announcing some very exciting news about the future first championship celebration here in the city of St. Louis. This wonderful city has been our generous host and partner since 2011 and will continue to do so through the year 2017.
to celebrate our renewed partnership with the city of St. Louis and our goal of providing outstanding experiences to the first community, I am proud to announce that next year, first we'll be expanding our championship footprint over more of this great city so that our four programs have room to grow and St. Louis will have more opportunities to showcase its world-class facilities. So when you join us next year, and I hope to see all of you back, as well as many new faces, our four-day celebration will feel more like an Olympic village, taking place in three venues in close proximity throughout the downtown area, still including the Edward Jones Dome, where we are right now. This will, expansion will give us room to grow, not only our teams, but our conferences, our entertainment options, and it'll give us more opportunities to reach into this wonderful community. Even our sponsors will love the new footprint, offering more options and opportunities to engage with each of the first participants. Right now, we're hard at work on all of the details behind this, and I can't reveal all the plans yet but I've arranged to give you a sneak peek of what's to come starting in 2015. You could be the greatest, you could be the best. You could be an engineer and a scientist. You can help the world, you can find a cure. You could be first, you could be the leader. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Still in the Hall of Fame Yeah, yeah And the world's gonna know your name Yeah, yeah Cause you burn with the brightest flame How cool is that? So there'll be more information coming soon, and we're even building a dedicated web page for all things Championship and St. Louis in 2015. So please watch out for the launch of that. Starting next year, the first championship will be busting out all over downtown St. Louis, and you won't want to miss it. I challenge each of you to work extra hard next year so that you'll be here with us, so that you and your team can be part of the next big thing. Thank you so much. And now, please welcome your championship MCs. Please welcome Reggie Showers from PTC, our championship sponsor. Reggie. Hey, good morning, everybody. How you Warriors doing? You guys ready for the competition? <laughs> All right, I can't wait to see it happen. My name is Reggie Showers, and I'm one of the ambassadors for PTC. And I can, can't tell you, this is an, such an honor for me to be here uh, recognizing you guys for your accomplishments and making it to championship. On behalf of everybody from PTC, we wanted to say congratulations to each and every one of you for maintaining the standard of excellence that is required of you by the FIRST program. You've proven to your teachers, you've proven to your coaches, you've proven to your parents, and most importantly, you guys have proven to yourselves that you have what it takes to be the technology leaders of tomorrow, the technology leaders that our world so desperately needs. So I want you guys to uh, take a good look at me. All right, what's the first thing you notice about me? I'm bald. 
All right. Take a closer look. I'm black. <laughs> what I'm getting at is I want you to take a look at my legs. Thank you. I've got magic legs, like Forrest Gump says. My legs are magic. I, um, both of my legs were amputated in a traumatic accident, that, uh, an electrocution accident that I suffered when I was just 14 years old. It was the same age of some of the competitors here this weekend. And um, I never let the disability stop me from achieving my dreams and my goals in life. And um, talented, thank you. You know, there were some talented engineers who used software like PTC Creo to design my prosthetic legs and my prosthetic feet, which allowed me to learn to walk again and also allowed me to pursue some of my childhood dreams. And one of my childhood dreams was to become a pilot and fly airplanes. You know, it's what I always wanted to do as a small kid. And uh, today, I can proudly stand before you and tell you that I am a licensed pilot and I fly airplanes, even as an amputee. Thank you. Another one of my childhood dreams, I had a lot of goals as a kid. Um, another one of my childhood dreams was to become a professional motorcycle racer. You know, who would have thought that's outside the box, you know? And I can stand before you today and proudly say that even as an amputee, I am not only a one-time, but a two-time world champion motorcycle drag racer. <laughs> Thank you. And um, for the last seven years, I have been honing my skills at snowboarding, believe it or not. And today, I can proudly say that even as an amputee, I am a certified snowboard instructor who is on his way to the 2018 Paralympic Games in Korea. Thank you. Now, I don't tell you these things to try to impress you with what it is that I can do. Well, what I want to do is impress upon you what a child can accomplish, what each and every one of you is capable of doing when you are taught to believe in yourselves and your capabilities despite some of the challenges that we all face in life. There was talented engineers who, who built my prosthetic legs and allowed me to pursue my goals and, and my dreams, and they were kids just like you who like science, technology, engineering, and math. And they went on to be innovators and leaders in their respective uh, communities and in, in their respective um, uh, divisions, if you will. I, um, I'm so very thankful for each and every one of those engineers that made a difference in my life because I would not be standing here before you if it wasn't for them and, and all that they did for me. I want to share with you a, a, a fact as I'm closing. I want to share with you a fact. Each and every one of you was born with a specific talent and specific abilities that the world needs, that humanity needs. Greatness is written in your DNA codes. Your parents know this. Your coaches know this. Your, your mentors know this. All of the first program directors know this. The sponsors of FIRST know this. I know this. And we're doing everything that we can do in our power to, to guide you, to support you, make sure that you get everything you need to become the leaders of tomorrow. And we need you to become the leaders of tomorrow. I would not be standing here today if it wasn't for engineers, okay? So thank you so very much. Once again, I want to congratulate you on your accomplishment for making the championships. I look forward to meeting as many of you as I possibly can today in person because, believe it or not, I am in the process of building my own robot, 
and I need all the expert advice that I can get. God bless you all. Go first. Please welcome Dennis Mullenberg from the Boeing Company. All right, well, uh, good morning. And uh, was that an inspirational story from Reggie or what, right? Awesome, awesome. And uh, it's great to be back here again this year. I'd like to welcome all of you to St. Louis. I know we have some returning teams, some new teams. There's a lot of big, big events, big things going on in St. Louis this weekend. Uh, Cardinals are in town, big baseball game over at Bush. And you know, we got uh, we got a Blues, Blackhawks, NHL uh, hockey game, big deal. But you know the 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 biggest event in St. Louis this weekend is the 2014 First Championship. Yeah. So uh, congratulations on being here. I think we've got about 42 Boeing-sponsored teams out there. You can give it a little shout for us Boeing teams out there. All right. Thank you. Not that I'm biased, but I think there's some really good teams out there. But hey, three, three real quick things I wanted to say this morning. First of all, I want to congratulate you. So not only being here as competitors and uh, the importance of the competition still ahead of us, but congratulations in terms of developing as leaders and teammates. The collaboration skills that you've developed, the gracious professionalism, all of the leadership skills that you've developed, these are going to serve you for your entire life. So I want to congratulate you not only on getting here in terms of the robotics competition, but being here as future leaders. Uh, second thing I wanted to say was add a little bit of inspiration. Could, could we bring up that graphic that I prepared? Every year I like to share a picture of a new robot that Boeing is working on. So uh, last year, for those of you that were here, I showed you the Phantom Eye. This is a, a high altitude, long endurance airplane. It's got about a 200 foot wingspan, hydrogen powered, uh, zero emissions. Its emissions are water vapor. That airplane is continuing in flight test uh, as we speak. Uh, this year's new robot is something we call the Phantom Swift. Uh, this is a robot, a flying robot, that has a unique ducted tilt rotor propulsion system that allows it to fly in, in urban canyons and in complex terrain. All kinds of unique service missions that this kind of robot can do. If you look at that little picture in the lower left hand corner, there's one of our engineers, uh, a recent new hire by the way, flying that robot in our lab. Now they went from design to prototype to a flying robot in about one month. These are the kind of engineers we're looking for for the future, right? So as you're working on robots, this is real stuff. We're prototyping, building robots. This robot is now entered in a uh, DARPA X-plane competition for vertical takeoff and landing. So it's real application. Now where is this going to go? Someday, perhaps a robotic airplane, you'll be flying in a, a commercial jet coming to the first competition uh, on a robotic airplane, perhaps. Um, it's also feeding our new product lines like the new 787 Dreamliner, the most efficient and uh, eco-friendly airplane in the world's fleet. And we're also working on new things like the new space launch system for NASA that's going to take the first human to Mars. Right? Those are the kind of exciting things that engineers will be doing. Right. So I want to wrap up by uh, encouraging you for that future. So hopefully just a little bit of inspiration about the possibilities ahead of you. But our world, our world needs innovators. It needs engineers. It needs problem solvers. People who can display critical thinking, who can work in teams, who can collaborate, who can lead with integrity. And that's what FIRST is creating. That's what you are. You as leaders of this future world and all of the challenges that we face, you will be well positioned to solve those challenges. So I want to encourage you, inspire you, thank you for what you're doing, and have a great competition. Welcome back.
Good morning. Please welcome Ray Shu from National Instruments. Wow, it's, uh, it's always an inspiration to be back here. Now, um, I started my career at National Instruments over 20 years ago as a software engineer. And one of the great things I love is that we have a culture of celebrating the achievements of scientists and engineers. Now, that gives us a sense of purpose, but it also lights a fire in us to do more. And when I look out here, I see the fire lit in all of you. And I have no doubt that FIRST is helping to accelerate innovation and discovery. But more importantly, it's creating our future leaders who will lead with gracious professionalism. And it all starts with the guidance and role model of your mentors out there. And so I want to take this opportunity to celebrate all the mentors out there. Can we take a moment to make it loud for the mentors? Now, last year, we were very excited that FIRST selected us to develop a new robot controller for the 2015 season. And our team has been working very hard with engineers from FIRST, Cross the Roads Electronics, and WPI. This is a team with decades of FIRST mentorship experience to bring you one of the most advanced control systems on the planet. And we are very proud to show you the final product here in St. Louis. It's called Robo Rio. Now, it's built with the latest and greatest technologies and powered by the LabVIEW Rio architecture. And we are proud to show this at our booth. Feel free to come by our booth. We have experts standing by to answer all your questions. And we also have a mini game set up so you can actually test drive this new control system. Now we know from experience that when we provide powerful tools to all of you, that you always exceed our expectation of what's possible. And so starting in December of this year, you will be able to get your Robo Rios directly from Andy Mark at a heavily subsidized price. And also, thanks to the generosity of our suppliers, we are donating to FIRST a Robo Rio for every FRC team next, e next season. And every new, FRC, every new FRC team in subsequent seasons. So I want to close by saying that in order to be a great professional engineer, you have to actually do engineering early and often. And that's why we're a big supporter of the progression of programs from junior FLL to FLL, FTC, and FRC. It's not any different than what it takes to become a professional athlete. And that's why leaders of all these companies are here in St. Louis, because we know that all of you are our future number one draft picks, ready to make an immediate impact to help make our world a better place. Thank you very much, everyone. Please welcome Brigadier General Horner of the United States Air Force. Wow. Good morning, everybody. I am really excited to be here, and I just want to take a second to say thank you to uh, Mr. Bosey, Mr. Kamen, Dr. Flowers. I would have loved to have been on the wall 25 years ago in the high school gym to where we have come now, and I, uh, you guys are the real heroes to me. So everybody give it up for those guys. And I got a favor to ask of everybody in here. As you sit here uh, with great pride and probably have your mind on other things coming up in the next couple of days, take a moment to reflect and think about what got you here. And most importantly, those key influences in your life, your parents, loved ones, teachers, coaches, and other people that inspired you to the excellence that you're going to be demonstrating over the next couple of days. And I take a minute to call them or text them or Skype them or however you want to do it. But uh, 
please give them the feedback and uh, tell them that uh, they're probably very proud of you. A lot of them are here, but uh, again, they're also real heroes to me. So thank you to the influencers in your lives. <laughs> On that note, uh, yay. we have a, a very close relationship with FIRST uh, as the United States Air Force. We uh, have a lot of the same values and uh, orientation towards technology. And uh, we sponsor a lot of those key influencers. And this year, I'm happy to announce we're going to bring them out for a chance to get to know the Air Force a little bit better in our mission set to uh, the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So we're looking forward to hosting that. And I know you guys are looking forward to getting out there. Like I said, uh, the Air Force and uh, first that mission set that involves science, tech, engineering, and math is uh, very closely aligned. Um, from, uh, I'm a fighter pilot, but everything from uh, our corporate partners and us uh, developing, building, uh, operating and maintaining uh, advanced fighter jets to the space systems and satellites to the uh, health uh, equipment to the uh, cyber stuff that we're doing out there in the world today. It all starts uh, at a very young age and you guys are on the first steps to getting there and that's why I think this is a wonderful partnership. We're a little bit longer in the tooth. Uh, you know, we didn't have uh, computers and cell phones and all that. We had very basic Legos and Erector sets and things like that. And I have no idea what the world's problems are, but uh, you're on the right step from STEM. I can tell you, as a fighter pilot, I'm also an aeronautical engineer, and I think being a geek is cool. And last thing I'll say is, uh, that's just the backdrop. This is a lot more important about your character development and the core values that we in the Air Force pursue with teamwork and being good wingmen for each other, integrity, uh, competition, but done, uh, done with good spirits in mind. And uh, you guys are developing those here, and I want you to take th those forward. The uh, world is your tiger that you're going to grab by the tail. I'm quite jealous. I'm going to watch and admire, um, whether it's for our nation or for all the other nations in this world. Uh, it's just going to be a neat time. So I just want to say uh, you can get on to solving those challenges in three days from now, the next couple days. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys devised and developed to uh, demonstrate who is going to be the uh, maybe the luckiest, but the most capable champion in the uh, first championships here. So good luck, guys. The Media Technology and Innovation Award, sponsored by Comcast and NBC Universal, recognizes the team that develops and implements the most outstanding digital experience, marketing strategy, and rationale for digital channels to disseminate content to its audience and further the first mission. The trophy will be presented tomorrow before Alliance selection, but here is a short video about the award and announcing this year's award winner. Being a part of FIRST Robotics really gave me a hands-on experience that I've carried with me so far in my career. Well, here at Comcast NBC Universal, we've been involved with FIRST for more than five years. STEM is all about science, technology, engineering, and math. It's not just about being in a lab or analysis. You can pair it with your passion and really take it far. Social media is really important in, in my work in particular because the two biggest things that I'm involved with are the Today Show and The Voice, both on NBC. And Social media allows us to connect with our viewers. At Comcast and NBC Universal, connecting people is really what we do. And for me, creating theme parks is about connecting people through a story and bringing them together. The students are going to be able to share their information. The web development is important. The usage of social media is important. And I think they're going to find that increasingly in their lives that it's going to be an an absolute necessary tool. Being able to help design the award for social media and technology through Comcast was a really wonderful way to give back. Please welcome Jamie Jacobs. Thanks. On behalf of Abbott and the Abbott Fund, it's my pleasure to introduce the first Future Innovators Award for this year. Now, this award recognizes uh, the creativity and ideas expressed in a, a process that really is taken through something very similar to the U.S. patent process. Now, why is that important? Well, 
because that embodies innovation. And innovation is the concept of taking a clever idea or uh, some sort of creation or, or invention and actually turning it into something through a, a very descriptive process into something that, that really works. And that's innovation. So a panel of, uh, of uh, engineers and of intellectual property patent attorneys reviewed all of the, the various applications this year and figured out who were the few finalists. And they, they looked at these applications based upon their innovation and in the spirit of first, as well as the ability to truly affect people around the globe in a very positive manner. And those finalists were then reviewed by Dean Kamen, and Dean chose the winner. Now, the innovation that won this year is an innovation which can take contaminated water and turn it into clean, clear, drinkable water using just a few simple things that are typically discarded and are available pretty much anywhere on the globe using a couple of uh, soda bottles, an aluminum can, some sand, a hose, and actually solar energy. So this year's First Future Innovator Award goes to the Solar Still, and accepting the award are Michael, Michelle Yan and Alexander Liu for Team 5212. Michelle, Alex. Please welcome Frank Merrick. Good morning, thank you. Volunteers make first run. It would not be possible for us to do what it does without the many thousands of volunteers we have all across the globe. And for that, all our volunteers have our sincere thanks. Here at Championship, though, FRC, has a chance to recognize a volunteer or volunteers who truly stand out in their long-term contributions to the program. This year, we have two FRC Volunteer of the Year Award winners. Both have been volunteers for over 10 years, and between them, have volunteered at more than 75 events and invested countless hours of their personal time in making first run. They are responsible for training our judge advisors. And this year had extra challenges when we introduced rules allowing teams to submit for chairman's awards at multiple events and required dean's list nomination, nominees to participate in an interview process. They kept their positive attitude and sense of humor throughout, even though I know that at times we were driving them crazy. Where the, their degrees in engineering and their MBAs, with their professional accomplishments, with their willingness to get their hands dirty and making things happen, with their dedication to FIRST and our principles, and with their tremendous contributions as FRC volunteers, these two individuals are worthy of emulation. So I am very pleased to present the FRC Volunteer of the Year Awards to our Chief Judge Advisors, Ellen Bancroft and Cindy Stong.
One huge and important job we, this weekend is the judging. Let's hear it for our volunteer judges. Please welcome past Woody Award winners and Woody. You're unbelievable. Hello, I'm Earl Seamy, the 2012 Woody Flowers Award winner. The Woody Flowers Award celebrates effective communication in the art and science of engineering and design. Dr. William Murphy founded this award in 1996 to recognize mentors who lead, inspire, empower using, and empower using excellent communication skills to help their student team members understand the challenges, opportunities, and satisfaction involved in the discipline of engineering and design. Hello, I'm Farid Dodin Lajivardi, a.k.a. Freddy. I'm the 2013 Woody Flowers Award winner, and I have the honor of uh, introducing the next winner. Now on to this year's championship, the Woody Flowers Award winner. This mentor turns kids onto accelerated math and engineering. Ten years as an engineer in the International Space Program, Space Station's program helps. This mentor brought many coaches to FIRST and supports them in their efforts to build their programs. The numbers are impressive. 23 FRC teams, 10 FTC teams, 36 FLL teams, and 8 junior FLL teams. She has profoundly impacted K-12 K education in Oklahoma. She created the Tulsa Engineering Academy, Academy at Memorial High School. She was Tulsa's Teacher of the Year. She developed Glee, a camp that mentors young women in their exploration of engineering. Through her invaluable experiences, she teaches her students to embrace the struggle that leads to success. She has led her team to many awards, including two Engineering Inspiration Awards and four Regional Chairman's Awards. Please join us as we congratulate Woody Flowers Award winner Lane Matheson from Team 932, the Circuit Chargers. Welcome your head referee, Dr. Aiden Brown, and your lead referees from each field, Dante Dolella, Sarah Lee, Mark Polanski, and Andrew Yeckel. Please stand for the national anthem of the host country.
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. O'er the land of the free. And the home of the brave. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, let's get this party started. Teams to your fields, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> 